of every man is a millionaire. Today, we're going to talk about credit card money, how to get massive credit card rewards and make money at the same time. What prompted this video is I saw a clickbait video that was aimed at the average credit card consumer. And it turned me off and it, it kind of got me feeling some kind of way. And there were some things that were clearly misstated. Look, guys, what we do here at Every Man is a Millionaire is we're teaching you to be exceptional. We're teaching you to be more than you currently are. We're teaching you how to have an abundant life. If you want to be average, or if you're looking for a hack to be an average, this isn't the channel for you. There's hundreds of channels, maybe thousands of channels out there that are going to teach you how to hack something without increasing your economic frame. What we do here is I'm going to teach you how to be beyond average. I'm going to teach you how to actually have high credit card limits and get great credit card rewards and have the money to pay it off. Here's something. And also, since I know how credit card companies work, I saw this person's credit limits. Um, they ain't making as much money as they would have you believe. Because those were some low credit limits for a person who's giving financial advice. And just to show another receipt, this here, it may not be here, but let me look. If this is your first time here, and anyone is a millionaire, I'm Glendon Cameron, your hustling godfather. What we do here is we get money, we stack money, we protect money, and we have a way to grow money. That's what we do here. We do it through entrepreneurship, and we do it through hustling. It's about getting more money, not shoehorning <laughs> your life into the money you already have. Let me see if I can bring this up. Should be on. Here we go. And I'm going to show you some. Give me a second. Here we go. Here we go. All right. This is a payment that I made to my American Express card this morning. An American Express card that I got last week. That's how much I have spent and I've already paid off and I'll probably spend 25 to 30 K this month. This isn't for me to brag or boast. This is to show me, to show you that I'm, I'm doing what I'm talking about. Because typically, when you get a new American Express card, most people have an exposure limit of 1000 to about $7,000. Uh, I put into the spending tool 20 It said approved. So I have a very high spending limit out the gate. And my goal is to get it up to 100 k now, I'm showing you this because, once again, I need to separate and <laughs> differentiate myself from the rest of the herd because what we're doing here is being exceptional. What we're doing here is being beyond average. What we're doing here is living that abundant life. All right, so let me get rid of that just to... Uh, show you some receipts because you know people like receipts people like to see that the person who is giving the information actually has done or is doing the stuff about the information right it's fair because what i have spent this month is more than half of what this person's credit limits are in terms of cards i was like really now, I'm also, we're going to talk about something else, too, because um, we got this one. And 
we're gonna go with these. These are the these are the two main cards, right? And I can show them <laughs> because the numbers are on the back. Now, this card here. I went to London, Los Angeles, Orlando, uh, Miami, and I, I forget this other trip because it wasn't that important. But all of this, the first class, mind you, all of that was done through points on this card, and I didn't pay a lick of interest. The plane flight and the hotel was from reward points from this card. This card I already got 70,000 points, and I just got it last week. Uh, 60,000 from signing up for it and 10,000 <laughs> spend. All right. Now, how did I do this? First of all, you need a business. And I've seen many people talk that smackety smack. Why do I have to start a business to be exceptional, to be beyond average, to actually have the money to get the credit, the credit limits because the new thing is you can have a great credit score and they're going to cap you at a certain limit and this person's limits were capped which tells that their income isn't what they're saying for you to get the fifty thousand dollar credit limits the seventy five dollar thousand credit about seventy five thousand dollar credit limits the hundred thousand dollar credit limits you're gonna have to show some receipts they're just not going to trust you unless you have an account with that bank where they can look in and see what your account balances are. Okay, then they may bless you with some high credit limits. But you're going to show some receipts. And in all of the credit forms, I see people nutting up about this. Look, living on credit as an extension of income is a very dangerous thing. Don't do it. If you don't have the money, don't spend it. Your credit will stay straight and you'll never get in trouble. So a part of what we're talking about here is developing in this for this car. It was business spend. And when you say, oh, God, you have a business. If you have an Amazon FBA business and you're spending 80, 100 K a month, and you're not doing it on this, or you're not doing it on this, you're stupid. You're literally letting tens of thousands of dollars in travel, hotels, cash back, whatever, go down the drain because you listen to Dave Ramsey. Proper use of credit cards is not a bad thing. Proper use of credit cards and credit can help make you wealthy faster. There's a lot of you cash and carry guys. I understand. I, I understand. I used to be one. I know where you're coming from, but you're going to have to embrace a new model. First of all, five checking accounts. Last video, I left out. You're going to have to have those five checking accounts. You're going to have to have a budget. So you're going to have to take care of the money that you already have coming in. You got to take care of that. You got to make sure to get the most mileage out of those economic bullets. Then you bring in new income. And this is where you can play this game. I spent what? Um, 300K on this card last year. Then pay a lick of interest. So if you have a business and you're spending money, why not get an additional benefit? You're already spending the money. Why not benefit? I still got points from that. And I took all those trips first class. You could do it too. And once again, let, let's just talk about this. Did I arrive at this level yesterday? No. Did I arrive at this level last year? No. Did I arrive at this level uh, about 10 years ago after investing 10 years in business? Yes. It's going to take you some time. Get rid of these jacked up expectations that 
because this is one of the things that kills people. And I inherently knew the first time that I built business credit not to do it. If you don't have the cash flow or the income, do not set yourself up for fail. Because let's say you have a 740, 760. You can pretty much get anything. You can get American Express Platinum. You can get lines of credit. You can get anything you want. Now, once you spend that money and you don't have cash flow to come in, now you have additional debt that you must service with your salary. That's not fun. You're going to have less money because you didn't take the time to become a seasoned business owner by starting off part time. Let's be real. Most of you are not going to have billion dollar businesses. Uh, most of you are not going to have 50 million dollar businesses or even 20 million dollar businesses. But most of you can create a six figure business and get wealthy over time. You can climb into the 9.9% in time. You can have a net worth of 1.8 to $5 million. You can do that if you adjust your expectations in time and stop wanting all of this stuff. Because uh, we've been, I've been I'm, I'm getting back into the game. Because like I said, from a cash and carry guys, I mean, I use this card like a debit card. I paid it off several times per month. I never even got to my credit limit. Cash and carry, but to get economic benefit from using a credit card. Now, where we're going to be is you got to scale up to this because I've been in forums and this is the credit card game. People will go out, good credit to get the credit card and get the reward and then they can't use the card anymore or they must get authorized users on so they have enough money and look, once again to get the 60,000 points for this card you just got to spend five thousand dollars over three months that's like 1600 bucks a month car insurance cell phone built that shouldn't be hard but these folks are out here playing the a game to game the credit cards and that's not bad but see i want to teach you to play a real game a, a game of abundance because i'm going to move all of that spin to this card and i'm going to get 5x points on hotels and travel i'm going to get way more points because i have the economic spend through my business and let's just say you started an Amazon FBA business on the side. Your goal was not to be an Amazon eBay, uh, FBA seller. Your goal was to create an economic gambit that maybe it makes you 2000 a month, but you spend 10. You get the points, you get the spend, you get money on top of it, and you get free travel. Free travel. One of the reasons I got this card is I'm going to be going somewhere every month and, you know, go through the American Express portal and see what you have to do to qualify. But every time I buy a plane ticket, I'm going to get five points, five extra points. Every time I get a hotel, I'm going to get five extra points. Plus the additional spend. And the way that you can play this credit card game is like a boss is to start a business, a small business. You won't have to play these games because once again, I'm teaching you about abundance. I'm teaching you about creating your own chessboard instead of being a piece on the chessboard. And you, you got a lot of folks who are trying to play this economic game with literally one hand tied behind their back because they don't make any money. That's the problem, and they, they see it as an unfair situation. Like when I did the video, like when my client got a $100,000 limit on his chase card, well, ain't nothing for the average man. The world is not set up for the average man. <laughs> the world is not set up for an employee. 
all of the benefits, all of the game are set up for business owners. So if you know that's the lay of the land, you know that's the game. Become a business owner. Don't sit back and whine like I gotta become a business. Become a business owner. Start a business. Start small on the side. Keep your job, and over time, build your economic engine where you can play this game and win like a boss. Put some money in your pocket and change your family future. I did a video on the channel this morning, live stream talking about people don't want to commit to anything. And this isn't about committing to a woman to marriage. Many of you will not commit to an ideal, a concept, a cause, because you want to keep your options open. The reason that I was able to spend on one credit card in one year was because I committed to this business. I didn't commit to going to club, whatever, what was the strip club's name? Uh, I don't even know the strip club's names because I don't even go. What club Nikki's is still open? Um, no, Magic City. I don't go up in there. That's a poor allocation of resources to throw money at a chick to be teased. But I digress. You can do this. You can do this if you one adjust your mindset, think abundance, think ownership. If you're a Facebook friend of mine. I posted something the other day. It's a six million dollar mansion owned by a brother. And I went a step further. I posted the property records and I found all of his LLCs. He had like five or six of them. Holding company, car dealerships. Once again, because I get a lot of people over there like I know judges. It ain't no judge living over there. These people are high level executives and most of them are business owners. That's how you play the American game. That's how you realize the American dream. You start a business. That's what you need to do. And once again, it ain't going to be easy. I'm not going to lie to you and tell you like, oh, well, you, you no, it's, it's going to be hard. It's going to take personal sacrifice. It's going to take delayed gratification. It's going to take you having money in the bank that you don't spend. It's going to take you getting your credit straight. All right. I just did this because there's so many people who are trying to play the game and they don't even have all the game pieces. The primary piece to any economic game is you owning a business. Hands down, the indicate that's that's it. Small business, medium sized business, or you need to own a business if you want to play the American dream game. You need to own a business, and right now, it's the best time to start one. Right now, all of the chaff, all the sorry people who think that they're geniuses because they can have the ability to go out and get a business card and put I'm a CEO on it with no receipts, no result, no money. They're about to be decimated. This is why I made the, you know, and I had people talking smack when I closed down offices. Because see, you got people who are in love with Big Willie style, but they're lulled to sleep by sound business practices that make money long term. I had one fool, he was like, oh, you, you can't keep this, blah, 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 blah. I am in a better economic position this year because of decisions I made last year in the beginning of the year in January. I'm in a much better situation. I have no debt. Moreover, I don't have a monthly obligation of rent on two offices and about $50,000 a month overhead and salaries. Didn't need them to do what I'm doing. And once the clients went away, I was like, okay. And this from a business owner, when you change your business and the current set of employees that you don't have, that you currently have, and they don't fit into this new vision, get rid of them quick as you can. Don't be feeling like I need to be Mr. Geist guy. And you need to pay people for six months, eight months, and they ain't working. That is not being good to your business. I know it sounds cold. I know it sounds harsh, but the reality is success doesn't care who makes it. 
Success doesn't care if you're a good guy. Success doesn't care if you're a bad guy. Success doesn't care if you're a serial murder. If you have the ability to follow directions and stick to a plan, you can be successful in these United States of America. And this credit card thing, because I'm seeing all these people and I'm seeing people with perfect credit, good credit, like 760, 800 bucks. But when I see their videos, I look at where they live. A lot of these credit gurus are not living well. They have legitimate good credit. But what they don't have is money. You need to have some money along with your good credit. Because uh, one guy, he's very good, but he's living in a dump. He got a great credit score, but he's living in a dump. He doesn't have an economic engine for him to fully utilize that good credit. When you have the money to leverage good credit, in five years, you could be leveraged up 1.52 million bucks starting from scratch if you have cash flow. Banks don't care if you have medical bill collections on your credit report. Banks don't care if you had a hiccup or two or a late payment. Banks care if you have the ability to repay. That's what they care about. And like my client, he didn't do anything with his credit. He helped other people. He co-signed for a car and they screwed him. That's why he had bad credit. It was nothing that he did. And the bank was able to look at that. The underwriter was like, oh, you didn't do this. Hundred K based upon your cash flow. And I don't know what it is with the credit repair, credit building community, where very few people talk about, there's some who talk about using a lot of net credit to enhance their wealth position, but most of them don't. Most of them don't talk about making more money. Most of them don't talk about LLCs. Most of them don't talk about, you know, they do talk about business credit, but business credit without the seasoning and experience of running a business is like putting a gun to your head. That's all, that's usually what the case is. Because you can get the money, but you don't know what to do with the money. And everybody that asks me, hey, Glennon, I got 10K. I got 20K. I got 30K. I got 40K. I got 50K. I got 100K. What business should I get involved in? And my answer is always the same. Put your money in your bank and start a small business and learn how to run a business. Because I don't care if you have 10 million. If you had 10 million and you invested in a business and you didn't know how to run that business, you're going to lose your money. Sean John, no, Damon John, Ashton Kusher, and someone else got into this clothing line. Collectively, they put $7 million in it and it failed. They overestimated the star power of Ashton Kusher. Didn't move the product. $7 million. And these are experienced operators. Ashton Kusher, what, $1.2 million net worth? Damon John, is he a billionaire? I don't know, close to it. Another person, he's all rich guys. They've been down this road before, and they sunk millions of dollars in this business, but because they miscalculated, they lost their money. And these are folks who know what they're doing. But you who have no clue to what a marketing plan is, what is a research and development plan? What's a sales? Pro oh, yeah, you're going to go out and get 150K and put in this business, but you don't know what you're doing. That's cray cray. That's cray cray. <laughs> don't do it, my people. Don't do it. Take your time. Keep your job. Start a business on the side, which means you will not be able to watch TV, which means you will not be able to hang out with the boys for two to three years. You go to work, you come home, you work harder because you're working for yourself. That's what it's going to take for you to accelerate and escape average. Everyone is talking about how to be more average. I'm not talking about how to be more average. I'm talking about how to be exceptional. I'm talking about how to have money seven days a week, how to be having money coming in, how to have money in this bank account, that bank account, that bank account, on your credit card, in your pocket. I'm talking about you having money 24-7 up in your life, not you utilizing credit as an extension of income.
That is stupid because sooner or later, it's going to catch up with you. You're going to get sick. You're going to lose your job. Something's going to happen. And the whole financial house of cards is going to fall down on your head. Don't do it. All right. Let's see. Let's see what's up in these comments. I get all up into this because I know what it's like to want some stuff, man. I know what it's like, but you got to do it the right way. Or it's usually going to turn out very bad at some point. What's up, people? What's going on? What's going on? Galen, <laughs> amen for the receipts. Yeah. Thank you. Welcome. Rock and roller. Chase Sapphire is a great card. I would say the Amex is better. And you used to be able to get the Chase Sapphire and the Chase Reserve, but now it's one or the other. I could upgrade this to the new product, but I like the way this card looks. <laughs> I'm not I'm like, you know what? Uh, I'm going to do because you get 3x points, I think, for travel on this card, but you get 5x points on American Express. It's a no brainer. All right. Yeah, they're both metal, man. The Sapphire and the American Express Platinum. Yes, it is, Ben. I know. And this is how you know. When you go out, when I got this, I got this card five or six years ago. And I remember when I put it out, every cashier, every clerk was like, oh, this is kind of heavy. Because they 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 weren't used to it. And this one is actually a little more heavier than that one. And I know they did it intentionally. <laughs> Done as credit is the real life game of Monopoly. Absolutely. <laughs> for play, credit for play. That's cool. Man. Ben, they, they won't commit to themselves. Oh, okay. For people with student loans. <laughs> big booty Betty, big booty Betty. Uh, if you're doing entertainment, that actually is true. But I, my, my clients don't need me to be up the strip club. Uh, rock and roll diva Dave Ramsey's plan for the basic person who just needs to do things simply. I would agree with that. Existing nature media, everyone should have a business. Absolutely. Been the bartender. <laughs> Most of the credit gurus only talk about getting cards because you have to get more cards to take advantage of the specials. They don't talk about like. My goal is to spend 500K on this bad boy next year and to do it heavily in traffic because of the business model that I talked about early, early, like January this year, I'm going to start employing it because if you get the YouTube course, essentially I'm doing the YouTube course, go somewhere, take the drone for a weekend. The whole trip is a business expense and I get points. Thank you, Deuce D. I love coming to this channel. It's like being in a room with mentors. What's up, Taboo Smash? Thank you for the $2. How old were you when you changed your life? I was 32. I was in that boarding house. I was going through a divorce. And 32, I remember the day I was in that bathroom, which was actually pretty nice because it had the subway towel and all of the antique features fixtures and I looked in the mirror and I said, dude, you got to make a decision. And at that day is when I committed, when I let a lot of personal drama go and I've been on an upper trend ever since. It's the same as my YouTube name. Christopher 
Leviston. My parents never taught me about credit and business stuff. I had to learn all this stuff myself, and I'm glad I made that decision. Uh, your parents were probably really good people. They just didn't know how. For them, get a job, work hard. It worked for a long time. That just doesn't work anymore for most people. <laughs> Hollywood movie, that's funny. How long did it take you to make it from 32? Define make it because I'm going to challenge you guys. I'm going to push on because you need to ask better detailed questions, and this will help you with your businesses. Erica P., how do you feel about starting a dropshipping business as a hustle? I did a video on this. I don't know where it is, but if you can find local vendors to ship your products, dropshipping can work. If you want to wait two, three four weeks from China, <laughs> Travis Riggins, did you start an LLC first when you got to the boarding house? I did not. Let me tell you. Let me go ahead through the whole process. Yeah, I'll tell the story from the beginning. I uh, used to work for Voice Stream Powertail, which now is T-Mobile. I was the salesman of the month. I was rocking. I was rolling. Uh, the guy calls me in the office and says, hey, uh, we got to let you go. I can possibly get you two more weeks. And this was one of those moments where there was someone who I came in through a tip agency and they were a direct hire. They kept the person who didn't sell as much as I did because they were a direct hire. And in that boarding house, I learned so many lessons. Like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. So I do a good job and I still get fired. Now keep someone who's mediocre. And when I look back in my life, I saw that happen all the time. I just didn't pay attention to it because typically when I did a good job, I got rewarded. So I'm walking home on Peachtree Street and I go home and I tell him I don't need the two weeks. I got to figure some stuff out fast because two weeks, I mean, it's just like hanging around while the dagger's swinging over your head. So I leave that day. I go home. I, I have a little money in the bank. And I got enough to pay my rent for like a few months. And I get in my room and I actually start to think. So I took out sheets of paper. And incidentally, in that boarding house, I had a computer. I know it's crazy. I mapped out my future and there was two paths, go to school, finish up undergrad, get an MBA and go into the finance field. Uh, the salaries look good, but this was 1999. And I was looking at, you know, if everything went right, finishing school like 2006. And then I was like, okay, I don't have the right skills. So I'm going to get me a job that's going to give me skills. And I didn't have the, background for a lot of jobs I was applying for because I made a decision that I was going to create my backstory, my own reference. So I find five jobs. I create five different resumes. One of them called me back. I get in and I created my own reference. Mr. Patel, I was on the phone. Oh, yes, he, he worked for, yes, he was a good employee. Very good. Loved him. Good guy. And they asked me two questions. Did he work there? And would you hire him again? That was it. I was like, Got an offer letter, worked that for about two years, and was at Rental Crate for eight, eight months. Then I went to Pan Systems. I was there six months. Then I went to Business Environments. I was there almost a year. Then at Business Environments, I started GC Solutions, my first LLC, because we had a customer that needed some furniture sold, but my boss, Ken, didn't want to do it. So I created an LLC, worked out a deal, and that's how I made my first 30K in a month. And I was like, whoa, I need some more of this used stuff. And that's how I got in the storage auction business. After spending a year trying to, well, I was selling used furniture, new furniture, but my margins were stupid, stupidly bad. I sold $1.5 million worth of furniture, made a lot of mistakes, and had a profit of 38 grand. And people was like, hey, stay in, man. You made a profit your first year. You know how rare that is? I didn't want to hear that. I was like, because I had that taste of selling that used stuff and those high margins. So that led me into the storage auction business where I spent until I started this YouTube channel. So that's what that's how it started.
<laughs> Mr. Patel. Uh, Superstar Customs. I'm trying to get my personal credit limits to over 100K. Utilize 5% of it. When recessions hits, do you think they would cut my limits even though I have excellent credit? That's a very good question. Have you noticed? Now, go to my myfico.com, start reading the threads, credit boards, and you will see a lot of people like, they cut my limit. Remember what I said about they scan your social media? When people who are credit gurus and they have good credit and they know every trick in the book, but they don't have high limits, it's because they don't have a high income. So if one of the ways you can, well, I'll talk about that later. Um, one of the ways you can do that, I'll put this in the offer because I have a one time, you only pay once. It's not a monthly offer for the credit, the, the credit card blueprint. And I'll talk about that because there are certain things you can do, even though it's a recession, your credit limit goes up. See, there, there's a lot of steps you can take. All right, cool. Uh, Christopher Leviston. Uh, Travis Riggins, I'm going to tell you something you probably don't want to hear. Once you start your LLC, more than likely you're going to need to keep your nine to five for two to three years after you start and after you get your business going on. And one of the reasons is there is a seasoning process and a mental process of going from an employee to a business owner. And you better to do it with the safety net of a job because there was times in the storage auction business when I overspent, I have money for a payroll. It lit a fire under me. I had to go make it, man. So I'm telling you. Latana, Miss Coach, was the underwriting for business credits? It varies from bank to bank institution to financial product. There is no one underwriting. There are several different underwritings that factor in several different factors. James Mack, after starting your business, when should you apply for credit? You should start setting up your LLC for credit, but you should not apply for credit in the business name till you have business income. And this is very important, and you need to have Money in the bank. I'll talk about this in the credit blueprint. Some of the things you need to do to make you look more attractive to their underwriting guidelines. Like uh, one of the reasons I apply, I actually apply for a lot of cards. Why do I apply for a lot of cards right now? Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. During Christmas, most credit card issuers relax their standards because they know that you will be spending money on Christmas presents. I got all five. I applied for five. I did a Apple Rama. And one of the reasons, like, it doesn't work like it used to be. Um, first time I did an Apple Rama, essentially the credit bureaus were much slower. So it didn't, you, you got all the inquiries, but they didn't put them on the same time. So every time you applied, it looked like you hadn't applied for anything. That doesn't work. Those inquiries go on instantly and they could see them. But I did this on the same day. So all of this new credit will have the same average age of credit. So for four years from now, all of these will age together. See, feel me. Uh, I don't know about the UK, man. That, that's a different animal over there. I don't know. I'm going to say no uh, from the credit standpoint. But the business stuff will work over there. <laughs> yes, it's under, you know, I was going to make that as an offer as I close, but the link below the business credit profile. And let's just talk about what you asked. It's going to be what I call a living course. Many courses just have information and sooner or later, the information is going to become obsolete. Once again, um, I got <laughs> I got like a lot of stuff. Um, what else I got here? Let me just make sure. And I got another one that I only carry. I just got it for the credit limit, but I got, let's do it like this. And we'll talk about how to use these cards. 
And I got this one. This is a cashback card. And this one. I got all of these except for the chase, which I had. And another one. And I may. And this is something funny, too. My credit score only dropped eight points from applying for all of those. Which because I thought I was going to drop like, you know, 20 points because I applied for a lot of stuff. It was very interesting. Just hit the link below. <laughs> Just go hit the link below and take you straight to checkout. Um, Adonis, big data is everywhere because the thing is they have the ability to monitor your purchases, monitor your social media, monitor you. And I'm going to tell you, and you will not hear this from anywhere else, where you live is a big part of this algorithm. You can't fake where you live. Well, actually, you could theoretically but i live in a million dollar neighborhood i applied from this address i guarantee you the algorithm like oh houses in this neighborhood are 750 up to 5 million i guarantee you that was a factor that my exposure limit is because i put 25k in there and it said you know because with american express charge cards which have to be paid at the end of the month there's this tool so you can go in there and put in how much you can spend and it's going to tell you whether you'll be approved or not now also about the spending tool don't play with it and do it like every hour or some do it before you make a purchase then make the purchase because this looks like natural typical behavior to american express i've had the american express before i know how they operate so and this is one of the reasons i made that payment today even though I have another 13 K before I bump up against my limit, I don't want to have that kind of uh, profile where I run up 25 K and pay in a month. I want to have a profile where I'm paying 10, you know, five to 10 K every week. Cause that's going to trigger other things. Cause I'm showing them. I have the money. I'm not trying to use I'm like I use this American Express as a debit card. Even though it's a charge card, I use it as a debit card. Robert Decorum. <laughs> I want to get my trucking company off the ground. Do I need to use my own cash or try to get 30k from the credit union? Trucking company. Are you going to be a driver? If you're going to be a driver, just get a regular least own uh, deal and drive if you're going to try to buy a truck and hire a driver that's a whole nother ball game sleepy g oh you're talking to Vern. pierre can i fold my 1099 job money into my side hustle llc to make it look more profitable you're going to have a problem with that because you're getting this 1099 that's saying, hey, we gave this person X amount of dollars. You got to pay taxes on that. So if you take that money and you don't do it the correct way and put it into your hustle, you're going to be paying double taxes on the same money. I don't think you want to do that, player. Dwayne Brown. <laughs> you know what? You know what's funny? I've gained weight. I've gained weight and I'll, I'll talk about this briefly because I had to eat more. I know this sounds crazy, but real quick, your body has a set point. So when you lose weight really quickly, your body's fighting to get back to that set point. So what I had to do was literally eat more than enough to manage to maintain my um, set point. And so once you eat enough and your set point is achieved, you can stop eating and you'll lose weight really quickly. But then you have to start, I, call it, I think it's called refeeding, where you do like a lot of mini cuts. But I've actually gained five pounds. It's funny because this, this used to be kind of tight, it's loose. I've gained five pounds, but it's muscle because I'm doing the workout. But yeah, we'll get to that. All right, you're going to drive? Cool. Yeah, just go ahead and use your good credit and get the only. Now, I would say this. If you have a job, 
I would get all the credit cards I can, and I would get the line of credits and everything I can get right now while you still have a job. Because the minute that you become an owner operator and you're starting and your year of operation starts now, it's going to be impossible for you to get most credit. So, yeah, man, it's crazy because well, I'll be talking about this because once again, I want to do it like with the disruptive mail and the live dating. I'm out here with you guys. And I got to say, I am never dating, presenting beta. And that that's a nightmare. But anyway, we're going to stay back on point. All right. So for those of you who want the living course, and once again, I'm going to put stuff in there. I'm going to give you profiles. And I'm going to update it because I'm actually doing this stuff. Because before I got all these cards, I only had two credit cards, the Chase and the um, Capital One. And I just spent all my money on this Chase. And I had like a 780 score on two cards. So one of the things that I believe in, and the only reason I did this is that they've changed the game. They've changed the reporting game. They've changed how credit is reported. They because once again, as a disruptive male, if they're gonna change the game, I'm gonna change my methods. I'm not gonna sit here and go, "What do you know? They changed the game. My score dropped 50 points, and I ain't really do that." No, I'm like, "Oh, whoa, 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 whoa! How are we gonna do this? This is what we're gonna do, and this is what we're gonna do, and this is what we're gonna do." Um, <clears throat> let's see. For those of you who want to do PayPal, uh, good lord, that that would not be it. That would go to nowhere. Those of you who want to super chat, that's the email address for that. Yeah, because well, yeah, everything is changing, but you want to get ahead of the curve because I got a question for you. And please answer this in the comments. How would you feel if you had five credit cards with $50,000 limits and you also had $500,000 cash money in the bank and you also had cash money on you? How would you feel if that was your life? that you can spend each card up to the limit and pay each card off and still have 250 K in the bank. How would that feel? Because what a lot of people are teaching you, and I'm not saying they're teaching you wrong. They're teaching you how to manipulate the credit card companies, get the card, get a high score, get all these offers, use the travel benefits. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm trying to teach you how to be a boss for real. Those are paper bosses. They're playing the game. They're winning. They're getting these points. They're taking these trips. Awesome. I want you to be the man. I want you to be the woman. And you're going to need some money to do that. All right. So with that, I'll see you folks later. For those of you who want the credit card blueprint, I think I got it for $3.99. It's a one-time fee. And I'm going to upload a lot of strategies because I have a strategy for all of these cards and I'll put that strategy in there and I'll share it with you because one of the things you need to do, you probably need five to 12 cards. I know that sounds crazy, but these, this is new rules. So you got to do things differently. I would not normally have as many i got what seven now i applied for five yeah i got seven and once i see how these report because they're not even reporting yet they're not even on my credit profile yet this is how new they are then i may three months from now do another app arama for another five cards and the reason is you always want to have way more credit than you need way more credit than you need and a lot of people they get scared, think they're going to do something stupid, so they start closing accounts, which in this new environment, closing the, whoo, that's just, my real estate agent told me of a client she had who had great credit, but for some reason, this guy closed all of his credit cards and he could not get financed for a house. True story. So th these are new.
All right. So I'll see you folks later. And there will be a playlist. So look for that. And I'll probably post it in the comments for those of you who want to tighten up on your credit game. Talk to you guys later.